I think we couldn't find the path forward in this session. A lot of times it takes a couple sessions to get something done. Um, there is broad agreement that this needs to be done. I feel confident it will be, but we couldn't put the final pieces together this year. What did we get twisted up on uh, specifically? Well, I think I think just the fact that there there were differences that um, that couldn't be agreed upon, and there wasn't enough time. Voucher bill is dead. One of Governor Bill Lee's priorities for this session. Another announcement he made at his state of the state address was the franchise tax. And we're taping this, John, on a Wednesday night. And we heard that there is agreement on the House and Senate side about this franchise tax. And it is a tax rebate to several large businesses here in Tennessee um, for what the governor calls an unconstitutional tax. I want to bring back in Senator Richard Briggs and Representative Sam McKenzie, both from Knoxville. And Senator, I'll start with you. Um, on this franchise tax bill, it sounds like the House is going to get the concessions it wanted. They wanted transparency on who is getting these rebates and they wanted the amount to be lower than what the Senate had in its version of the bill. Um, Senator, you voted for the Senate version of the bill. What do you think about those concessions? You know what we have to do because this is a very technical issue that, uh, you know, that was brought by some of the CPAs that work here at the government. This was reviewed by our state attorney general uh, uh, Scrimetti, who I have a tremendous amount of respect for both as a person uh, and for his uh, legal reasoning on these. And I have to depend on, on these experts to tell me what is right and what, what needs to be done. I did vote for the Senate version. Uh, of course, I want to wait and hear what the details are of the House version. But if I hear from these people that I respect a lot, respect a lot in our departments of revenue, from the controller's office, from the attorney general's office, all of whom I respect tremendously, uh, I will be going along with what their recommendations are. And Sam, in terms of your thoughts on franchise and what the Democrats thought about it, uh, also one of those issues where you guys were like, no way, we, we're not for this at all, don't, don't think this is even correct to do? You know, let's, let's be clear, and I, I don't think anybody can argue with the fact that we're a great place to do business. We have an extremely low tax rate, both on the, the citizens, which are their employees, and on businesses. Now, yes, that, that was a miscalculation in this franchise and excise ta tax, but overall, every business pays less for doing business in the state of Tennessee than almost anywhere in the United States. So for those 80 businesses or so to threaten us and not want to negotiate and say, well, we can pay more here if you recalculate there, you're talking about their employees. You're talking about a billion dollars going out of our coffers, half of half a billion dollars going out every year because they're not going to pay that tax anymore. Again, this governor, look at what he's pushing. Tax breaks for our richest companies and, and incentives, $7,000 to the rich and almost rich who send their kids to these private schools because poor kids can't with this with the voucher. So th there's a commonality here. So no, we do not support that. But with that, those names being made public and transparent, I'm going to make sure every constituent in the 15th district understands these 80 businesses are getting another tax break. They're already paying less than anywhere else in this great country of ours. And then they're asking for more, more and more. At some point, it has to stop. Every person, every entity has to pay its fair share. There was another bill this week, this past week, that popped up and advanced. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it already had sort of gone through the Senate, but through the House, it's this whole issue of arming some teachers, supposedly after they have proper certification, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that 
the ground moved a bit when that one passed. I don't know if you guys felt it, but we felt it over here with a lot of school systems saying, what in the world? So Dr. Briggs, I wanna know your thoughts about that and if you think that's a smart way to go, this idea of giving teachers with checks and balances supposedly, of, for example, like a principal having a say-so on it or uh, a school system having a say-so on it and proper sort of accreditation. If you think that's a good thing, if the, is that okay? Uh, you know, we're going to leave that entirely up to our school principals, our school superintendents, our school boards, and our chief of, chiefs of police. Uh, I initially had said that I was not in favor of uh, arming teachers in schools, but after I did a little research on this, I found that I found out that uh, Tennessee was really behind the rest of the country. For instance, we're the, now the number 34 states that does allow the possibility for teachers to carry firearms. Uh, in the past, several years ago, some of the states such as Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Minnesota, Oregon, Delaware, Michigan, among others, that adds up to 33 other states, already have provisions where teachers can be armed in classrooms. So this is not something that's radical that, uh, that Tennessee has done. And to be specific, usually we say the devil's in the details uh, in, a, in a negative matter, but here the devil's in the details is that the legislature has not allowed teachers to carry guns, but what we have done, we say that if a principal in a school can identify a teacher by name and he puts in writing, I would like for this teacher to be armed. He sends it to the superintendent of schools. The superintendent of schools in writing says, I approve this occurring. He gets the concurrence of his school board. Then it goes to the chief of police or the sheriff. Let's just use the chief of police uh, mm -hmm. as an example. Mm -hmm. He has to say, I approve this is necessary. Then, of course, because the chief of police works for the mayor, it's going to ultimately have to be approved by him or her. Mm -hmm. At that point, the individual teacher that's been identified as someone that could be armed must undergo, shall, it's not optional, must or shall undergo psychological examination to be certain that there's uh, nothing there that disturbs anyone. There then has to be a background check. At that point, he undergoes 40 hours of training mm -hmm. specific with the, specifically with the local police departments regarding school safety and active school shooters. And then at that point, that teacher would be allowed to carry a concealed <clears throat> weapon. Uh -huh. It would not be students, but it has to be renewed every year in the same manner and approved by all of those individuals. Uh, well, let's and you may say, well, I was going to say, let's do this, Dr. Briggs. We, uh, we're hitting on a commercial time. We need to take a break. We do want to hear from Sam McKenzie. Let's take this break, and then when we come back, we'll hear from his thoughts on this uh, guns and teachers bill.